Don't bring grills inside to heat your house. Don't run your generator inside your house. We're seeing an increased risk of fire danger. So be extra cautious. If you are trying to warm yourself, do not use anything that is not approved for that specific purpose. Now, those are certainly words of caution this morning for storm victims facing the cold without electricity. News 13's Justin Berger takes us inside a Fairview home without power, showing us what options are available to those in need. On Tuesday evening on Guffey Mountain Road in Fairview, Frank McBride's thermometer dips below 40 degrees. You put on layers. An oil lamp illuminating his kitchen table. It's a necessity. It's, an, it's not an ambience, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> his toilets haven't flushed in weeks. He doesn't have power. The record for us is five days. And how long has it been now? 18. As his breath becomes more visible, he's piling on the layers, wearing multiple around the house, sleeping with extra comforters. But he says going to the shelter has not crossed his mind. Luckily, a neighbor further up the mountain uh, lent us the, uh, the uh, barbecue uh, thing. You know, it's a little one, but it's fine. You know, make a, have a hot tea here. Many on his road are without power. Just outside his home, downed lines, splintered poles, and out-of-place transformers. McBride says he understands why it's taken so long. You seem to be very patient, despite the fact that you haven't had power in 18 days. Well, you, you, it is. It's, it's a 100-year storm. The last one was of, of this note uh, was 1916. So uh, I lived too long. <laughs> the cold weather is going to stick around for at least a few more days, and it's no telling when power will be. All right, cut out of that package a little bit. Yeah, right but there. really kind of interesting. Yeah, you, testament you, you, to perseverance. Yeah, and you can find the rest <laughs> of it at WLOS.com. Moving on here, the Clyde Fire Department answered the call of duty during flooding from Helene. Firefighters made rescues and evacuations. But as News 13's Rex Hodge reports, when the rising water reached the fire station for the first time in history, they had to find another base of operations. You can talk flooding in Clyde from Ivan, Francis, even Fred, but it took Helene to actually reach the Clyde Fire Department and cause some damage. Chief Wenford Henson says the water got five feet deep on the ground floor of the firehouse, something he says has never happened before. He says it damaged everything in its path, including appliances, even vending machines. He says 10 sets of turnout gear worn by firefighters washed down the Pigeon River each one carrying a price tag of $4,500. Water got into two fire trucks, one already repaired at $3,500, another one still in the shop. Henson says insurance will recoup the cost. As repairs are underway at the fire station, operations have moved next door to the Clyde Central United Methodist Church. Henson says they've been a lifesaver with a place to park his trucks and provide room for his crew. The firehouse structure is safe. Henson says as work crews finish repairs, they'll move back, keeping an eye on the weather. They've done tore the sheetrock out, uh, got it dried, uh, putting up temporary doors right now so we can get our trucks in the warm where it's, where it's getting cold, cold weather. So we're going to have to get our trucks where we can keep them from freezing. The Clyde Fire Department has the honor of having a 9-11 memorial here with two pieces of steel from the Twin Towers. Chief says the flood muddied up the place, but he says it will be cleaned up. Reporting from Clyde, Rex Hodge, News 13. And the Small Business Administration's disaster loan program has run out of money. It comes as communities recover from Hurricanes Milton and Helene. The program offers loans to homeowners, renters, and businesses following a disaster. The SBA is pausing new loan offers until it gets more funding. Congress can approve more funds, but lawmakers are on recess until November 12th. In the meantime, officials say people should keep applying and the SBA will issue loans when the money becomes available. And now your News 13 Skywatch weather. It is breezy and cold out there this morning. We do have some wind gusts in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range. We'll see that continue during the day today. It will be the coldest day of the season so far. And then tonight we have a widespread mountain freeze warning, a frost advisory for just about everybody in the region. 
Taking a look out there at wind speeds right now, 10 to 20 miles per hour. We do have a few in the 20 to 25 mile per hour range there at Cashers and Saluda. Gusting to 20 right now in Hendersonville and the current temperature is in the upper 30s to low 40s. So the wind chill reading right now in spots in the upper 20s to low 30s. Definitely a cold start to this uh, Wednesday. We'll see temperatures really struggling with that northwest wind today. Those winds out of the northwest continuing to pull down colder air. And even with some partial sunshine this afternoon, our high temperatures are going to struggle to get back to near 50 degrees. So that persistent northwest flow keeping things chilly today. Tonight, that high pressure really builds in and we see clearing skies. We see calm winds. So the bottom falls out temperature wise. Most mountain areas will drop back to near 30 degrees. So we've got that freeze warning for all mountain areas and then everywhere else will be pretty frosty to start the morning on Thursday. Thursday we'll see upper 50s. So we start to recover a little bit from this cold. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we really see those warming temperatures with highs back in the low 60s on Friday, upper 60s Saturday low 70s in Saturday's forecast. But uh, with the um, increasing temperatures, we will see a bit of a high fire danger. Our outlook for rain for the next seven to 10 days is pretty dry. So we continue with the very dry pattern after Helene and that wildfire danger will increase a little bit, especially Sunday and Monday with those temperatures in the low 70s. Cold nights, the next couple of nights, we're back to 32 Friday morning, 36 on Saturday morning. From the live desk, continuing updates from Black Mountain, Helene Recovery, a curfew remains in effect from 9 in the evening to 6 in the morning. There, officials ask that you don't burn brush within the town limits, as Megan was just telling us, that wildfire risk. Also, avoid getting into rivers or streams and avoid town parks until they officially Reopen a mobile charging and internet connectivity station is still available in the lower parking lot of uh, First Baptist Church that's on Montreat Road. And remember that even if you do have water back right now, it is not drinkable, even if boiled. Um, if you need any of these links from any of the information that we've given you this morning, phone numbers or addresses, you can uh, search the county. Um, on our website, WLOS.com, for those recovery resources. That's the latest from the Live Desk.